different people, and the Holy Spirit will come and give this man the endowment of, of maybe the laying on of hands for, to get somebody healed, come, to, and she knows that she needs to get up and give a word of encouragement. Somebody over here, the Holy Spirit, now the, the Holy Spirit moves. You get, that's why we, we, I'm gonna be teaching on the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and all the gifts, the uh, tongue, language, everything, we're gonna go just what the Bible says. But you need to understand some things, okay? So we are a body believer. So when it comes to that time when, and I'll know, when the body needs to minister, you may give a, get up and give a testimony of when you were saved. You may get up and somebody else felt led to get up. I feel led to pray for sister so-and-so or give an encouraging word to sister so-and-so. Everybody following me so far? But you gotta be aware of the Holy Spirit. Now in, in, in uh, denominational churches, they don't practice this, but I'm, I've made it, God has led me to be able to create an atmosphere in which the Holy Spirit can be the Holy Spirit, but now the believers have got to learn when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that's when you are to function and to move, okay? And flow in the gift of the Holy Spirit that God gives you, okay? Now, can everybody have all the gifts? Fine with me, if you got them. But according to the word, he spreads and gives them to each individual. Now, Yolanda has the gift of singing. She, if you noticed this morning, she got up and she sang. Our sister got up and gave a testimony and sang. Sound like you sang in tongues. Anybody recognize that? Wasn't that beautiful? Did you hear the sister sing in tongues? Did you hear? Uh, you know, you didn't hear? I heard her. How many heard her sing in tongues? See, look at the hands. See, so you gotta be aware of what's going on. And see, did you notice how the power of God was on her? You notice her mic was, you know, wanting to run away? <laughs> when the Spirit of the Lord comes on you, you might shake a little bit, okay? The other, the other night we just had a, up here, we had, how many was here on Wednesday night? Remember, we just had the Holy Spirit to work and move, and each person moved and pray, put people in the hot chair, and, and I think I was praying for, uh, uh, who was I praying for? Uh, Mrs. Keys. Almost, when I was praying for you, I almost went under the power myself. And the thing about it is that when you minister under the unction of the Holy Spirit, you get blessed too. You get blessed. But see, we're talking about something that's totally different from our natural thinking. You came to understand in your mind. And only by the Spirit of God, as you read the Word of God, you'll understand. But let me say this. Okay, here we go. And he goes on and says, now, and I'm short, I'm short, just making this short. For each one is given the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and profit. Not for myself, but for the whole body might profit. That's in verse 8. Verse 9, and to another, wonder-working faith by the same Holy Spirit. To another, the extraordinary power of healing by one spirit. I believe that Rachel has that gift. My wife has a gift of exhortation. Each one of us has certain gifts, and you've got to find out what that gift is. And then start praying, Lord, you've given me this gift for a reason, not for me to sit in the, in, in the chair, but when the proper come. Now, all you got to do is say, Brother Bob, I say, yes, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to pray for somebody. Well, come on up and, and, and pray. How many understand? That's why we work, we work works here, okay? And then if it moves in that direction. All right. Then he says another, verse 10, another the working of miracles. Someone says, well, I've never seen any miracles. Well, we don't ever give anybody to get up and pray for a miracle. So why, you ain't gonna see no miracles. You follow me? We've got to ha change, understand the assembly, how God wants it to work. And I've done my best to illustrate to this assembly over the years how to function. But you got to function. And, and most of you do, most of you do, okay? But some of you haven't, you know, you haven't learned, we're not fussing. But 
if you have that particular gift, if the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he might come upon you to speak in tongues, okay, in the assembly. But if you do speak in tongues in the assembly, you've got to know that somebody's in the assembly that can interpret that tongue. If not, then you are responsible to interpret your own tongue. How many understand that? Okay, that keeps all the confusion down. So, here's what he says. For just as the body is, is a unit and yet has many parts, and all the parts, though many, form only one body. We are all of one body here. N not one of us is more important than the other. No need to get jealous if somebody has something you ain't got. I tell people, my goodness, if you got give 10 gifts, I'm going to pray for you. And thank God I only have one. Because there's a lot of responsibility that goes with that individual that has 10 gifts. How I many of you know they're going to be busy? Are you out there, church? Yes. They're going to be busy operating in 10 gifts. So you've got one gift, two gifts, whatever. But the thing is, it's not for your edification, but it's for the for edification of the one body. Okay, if somebody can sing better, thank God they can preach better. I'm secure in my preaching. I mean, if you can preach better than me, I'll give you the pulpit. But I know the word of God, and I know, that, I know if you get off the word of God, I'll have to say, you know, to you in private, <clears throat> let's talk. <laughs> in love, of course, in love. I mean, you know, only a fool does not heed to correction. Amen. Now, let me say something. We may have teachers, maybe somebody get up here, and they'll, they'll speak like healing is not for today. Wait, how many of you know they missed it? You know, we can show you scriptures where it is. I mean, it's simple. No need to blow, be blown out of the church. I'm not going to come back. I heard that guy say he didn't believe in healing. Well, he, you know, we'll, we'll help him out. You'll pray for him, okay? Or they might not this, or they might not that. Don't get disturbed. I hear, I know. We got leaders in here that hear, they know. We'll correct it. Okay, now how many knows the Bible enough to know if somebody gets up here and say, salvation is not for the day. How many in here would know that would be a big lie? Raise your hand if you know it. Good, I'm glad. Or right, somebody comes up here and say, well, healing is not for the day. How many knows it? Yeah. Raise your hand if you know it is. Yeah. Raise your hand if you know it ain't. No, no hands raised. Yes, God hasn't changed. The problem is not with God. Okay. According to our faith. You see. Now, I could talk and talk. Good time goes by when you're having fun. Somebody in here that's never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, come up and we'll pray for you. I lay hands on you. But you got to be willing to get out of your seat. Leave your seat here. We got a seat for you. How I many of you know I'm, my background is Baptist? I had my traditions, and we don't do that. But I had to learn that God does do that. So if you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just like you receive Christ as your personal Savior, by faith. Now, the Holy Spirit will give you the utterance or give you the words to speak, but he ain't going to speak for you. You got to speak. Okay. Now I have seen my wife. How many have ever seen that before? Just. <laughs> Sometimes it's just the power of so. I mean, you shake all over and, and, and it, it just happens. Most of the time it's very simple. The Holy Spirit will give you the words. But you got to speak them. Very simple and complicated. The Bible says, as the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance or gave them the words, they spoke. 
The Holy Spirit didn't speak. You speak. And it's for the edification of your own personal life. We're talking about the prayer language. Praying in the Spirit. Now, I'm going to say this. Some people cannot receive because of certain things that, uh, that, that's happened in their life. I remember a young boy came and he always wanted to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, but he never could. It never happened. People prayed for him. And then he was sitting on my couch and the Lord showed me that he had resentment towards his mother. And <clears throat> anybody in here has ever had any of that? <laughs> Yeah. And God says, tell him to forgive his mother. His mother would always be going around. You stand up here. Yeah, you're getting too fat, son. You need to. Yeah, you're getting too fat. I mean, you know, he can resent that after a while. How, 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 do you know that he could resent that? How, somebody constantly about punching you. Yeah, yeah, I got to get rid. <laughs> you can sit down before I, before I hurt you. He resented that, and that blocked him from receiving from God. Hello, are you out there? Or back teaching that you had. Well, tongues are not for the day. They're, 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 they're from the devil. Well, now, <clears throat> before I got saved, and I was 26 years old before I, uh, uh, I got saved, and I went to beer joints, and, and I went to honky-tonkies, and I honky-tonkied, and I drank my beer, and I spit on, in, in, in the platoon, and I did all the things that everybody does in the world, and I never heard one person speak in tongues in a beer joint. <laughs> Now, I have heard them say some of the things that wouldn't go that you wouldn't want to say in the church. But, but since I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, only Christian people speak in tongues. So if you've had that type of teaching, it's gonna, that's, a, that's a stronghold that needs to be torn down in your mind and, and say, I'm going to believe the word of God over what man has told me. Hello, church, are you out there? There's so many things that, that's been put into our, our system that keeps us from functioning as God's children. Okay? Now, the seat I see is still vacant, but it's still there. It's still there. Is you sweating yet? <laughs> Are you sweating? <laughs> Some of you totally closed down your mind. <laughs> I couldn't stand to get up here in front of all those people. It is scary. <laughs> uh, well, I'll sit in the chair. <laughs> Do you want me to call on you? Yeah. Spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's good. Okay, what you got? What you just said. Now, sir? I do have something else. Huh? I do have something else. Okay, let me have it. You want to get up? Yeah. Come on. Uh, now, see, now, he's the opera. Now, th th I didn't pick him. He has something else. And so I yield to him and then let the Holy Spirit use him to share something with us. All right, come on up here. You're going to sit in the chair or you're just going to stand up and share? Okay, I'll hold this. Okay. I was, um, this morning I was reading through Second uh, Chronicles. And it talks about how Solomon built God's temple. And it just reminded me of some things. How many of you have some jewelry on? You got some gold, some silver, right? Raise your hand. I got some silver right there. There you go, right there in your teeth. <laughs> Take a look at it. Take a look at the gold and the silver now. I got, I got gold right here on my wedding band. Yeah, that's right, right there. Yeah. It's pretty nice, isn't it? <coughs> pretty precious. I want you to imagine this whole building covered in gold. I want you to imagine Pastor Tilton standing before us with an ephod with precious stones, rubies, and diamonds just glittering, just dazzling, right? If you read through Exodus 
chapters 25 through 30. Be amazed at everything that God instructed the Israelites to use in the building yes. of, his, of his temple. Yes. Right? right? Just nothing but the most precious materials the earth, our planet that God created has to offer. And all of these precious materials, spices, sandalwood, acacia wood, gold, silver, precious stones, diamonds, to build his temple. Now, what I'm getting at to is this. Second Corinthians. Some of you may already know where I'm going with this. Second Corinthians six sixteen. For you are the temple of God. The temple of the living God. Yeah. Now, stop and think. Pastor, correct me if I'm wrong. The Old Testament is a shadow mm -hmm. of the New Testament. Right. The Old Testament was telling us how beautiful, how precious God's temple is in his sight. The New Testament tells us we are we are that temple. And when God sees you, sees you, sees you, he sees that precious temple made of nothing but the finest the earth has to offer. He made us. Jesus washed us. In his sight, we're a precious, precious, amazing, beautiful creation. Living stones. Living stones. Yeah. That's Amen. P Peter tells us that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for yeah. showing us. Right? Now that that's a good see, God is illustrating that how the Holy Spirit works. But you know what? He was prepared. The Holy Spirit prepared him at home. Now they don't always operate like that. It can happen just like that. I don't know if the Holy Spirit prepared you for what you did, but you were prepared. To share and then the, the song and everything. The passing of the ball. Now look how all this is unfolding here. This is the working of the Holy Spirit. But if your mind hasn't been renewed and, and, you're, and you say, well, gosh, they play ball in that church. <laughs> it ain't about the ball. <laughs> The ball was only an example of, 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 of the Holy Spirit giving you the unction to get up and share what the Lord has given you to share. And you have a pastor that understands how the Spirit works. Not that I'm, you know, Moses or anything like that. I'm just me. But God has trained me. I'm 83 years old. Come March, I've learned something. I know how the Spirit works. When I go out there and all, wherever I go, I listen and follow the Holy Spirit. My wife does. I know many of you do too. But we're 24-7 on it. Okay? Now, getting back to somebody that said, you probably received the baptism, but you didn't receive your tongues. And you want to receive your tongues this morning. Well, I could teach you on why the tongues are very necessary because see no man understands you you're praying unto God with a language and your intellectual mind cannot destroy your faith and out of your spirit shall flow rivers of living water which is the Holy Spirit uses your tongue even in the natural tongue that you speak You've got to learn to use it for the Holy Spirit to edify people. And the same thing with our unknown tongue. 
I don't understand that man. You're not supposed to understand him. But if somebody speaks in the church in a tongue, somebody will be here to interpret what that man said. And besides that, you can sing in tongues. My wife and me went to um, pray for our sister-in-law years ago. And the doctors examined her and... Uh, Turned her upside down, cut her open, did everything they could. They couldn't find one thing wrong with that, with my sister-in-law. So here comes Bob and Susan and her sister. We go up to the hospital downtown. See, you just walk with God. And all of a sudden, you know, there we are, and we're listening to her, and she's crying, and I've been begging God to help me. They can't find out what's wrong with me. I'm hurting all over. Oh, it's just horrible, you know. So I said, well, can we pray? Oh, would you pray for me? Oh, yes, let me pray. I reached over, because you better be on the ball when you're walking in the spirit. And I touched her. She come out of that bed. She wasn't speaking in tongues. She was singing in tongues. And dancing with it. And I'm heading for the door. <laughs> See, the Lord knows how to sort of deal with you too. And I'm thinking, man, the doctor's going to, they're going to do something with me. I know. Next day she went home. She was healed. And she kept singing in the spirit. <laughs> Out of her body flowed rivers of living water. Now, when you first start speaking, your mind is going to, you're educated be, be kind, Bob. Your educated brain is going to re start reject that. Because it's not a natural, it's a supernatural language that the Holy Spirit gives you the utterance to speak. And then you, your spirit gets involved. I don't know if you could tell when I was speaking, oh, I feel it right now in my spirit. I just want to pray. I want to sing glory to God in my unknown life right now. But I'm holding myself down. I be quenching the Holy Spirit. Please don't let me quench you, Lord. Because it'll just rise up in you. Oh, yeah, out there? <laughs> I see some of you. you. You see, we serve a supernatural God. Huh? Come on. Supernatural God. But we're so used to the natural and been taught in the natural so long, and somebody comes along in a, in, in a service like today and say, man, this is something else. I ain't never heard anything like this. If somebody don't come and get in this thing, I might just sit in it. <sighs> All right, let's put it this way. How many just want, anybody here want to be blessed? Uh, uh, All right, uh, okay, she wants to be blessed. We'll just let her be blessed. Just bless her. The ball's been given to me by the Holy Ghost to bless my sister. Now, somebody probably be led to stand up here with his oil and anoint her with her oil. I wonder who it could be. Now, just be, be oh, did, huh? did you have your hand up? Dave? <laughs> you, <laughs> oh, he feels led. I, look at this. All right, you know how to do that. Oh, right, you take the top off. See, and you do like this. And you do like this. Okay? And put it right on her head. Put the oil on your finger now. Okay? Anoint with oil. There you go. In fact, David, I sort of feel led for you to pray for her. 
Huh? Put your hand, both hands. The Bible says he laid hands on them. I'm learning that. He laid hands on them. That's, oh my goodness. Whew, man. Wow. I will go get in on this. Go ahead, Dave. Well, we thank you for Ann Roar right now, and, she, and her body is healed right now. She is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. It don't have to be a long prayer. Wow. Did you, did, you get, did you get a little breeze of that back there? Just a little breeze. Woo! God bless, man. Oh, my God. Oh, man. That's wonderful. Now, let, let me share something. We've got to go pretty soon. My wife and me learned this years ago. And when you walk with God, sometimes the devil get on your case. But you see... <clears throat> Two is better than one. So I'm sitting in the chair, and my wife knows exactly what to do because the ball has just been passed to her. And she's going to get up and do what she knows the Holy Spirit's telling her to do. In slow motion. It's right back there, baby. <laughs> yeah, run now. Father, we thank you. We can come to you in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb. And we thank you when we say the name of Jesus. Your ear turns our way. We thank you. You hear the prayers of the righteous. And we are righteousness with your righteousness, Lord. We thank you, God, for bringing Bob and me together. And I thank you, Lord, you have made us as one. We are one mind, one accord, one spirit. I speak the blessings of the Lord upon him, for he is a man after your own heart. I thank you for his love for your word. I thank you he hunger and thirst after your word. And your word says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I ask you now to fill him full. Breathe afresh upon him. We thank you, Jesus. You sent the Holy Ghost to be our paraclete. I thank you the Holy Spirit is his paraclete. One called along beside him to, to help him through every situation. And I thank you, Jesus, for all your love that you have poured into Bob. I thank you, God. His heart is full of love for you, for the people of God, for his family. I thank you, God. We can serve you with gladness. We can come before your presence with singing. We know that you are God, the one true God, the only wise God, our Savior. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. You hear us when we pray. And we pray for all your people that we will grow in grace and knowledge of you and in favor with God and man. And I thank you, God. He has a pure heart, a clean mind, and I thank you, Father. I ask your blessings upon him. Bless him, Lord, as he continue to bless him. Protect and keep him. Let your face shine upon him. 
Continue to be gracious unto him and give him your favor, your love, your peace. And bless him as he goes out and as he comes in. And bless him continually with health and strength. May he be strengthened in his inner man with might by your spirit day by day. In Jesus' name, I thank you. And bless you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. For you are the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, our Savior. And to you, Lord, be all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We thank you for his life and how you have brought us forth how you protected us even through our childhood, Lord. We look back on it often, and we know it's you, God. It's you. It, we desire, most of all, Lord, your will, your purpose, your plan, your program, Lord. It's God. It's God. It's God that brought us to this land. It's God that put this building together. It's God that brought these people here. It's God. 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 Hallelujah. It's God. To you be all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And we do thank you for every person that comes here, Father. And we thank you, God. Increase is coming. Yes. We thank you. This road is getting paved. And we thank you as people come by, the Spirit of God will speak and draw them to this place. And we thank you, God. This is a sanctuary of the Lord. We thank you. We're the sanctuary of the Lord as well. And we give you glory, Lord. And we are in great expectation of what you have in mind for this body of believers, Father. And we bless everybody of believers, Father, that we'll all speak the truth, walk truly, deal truly, live truly for your glory. And may Jesus always be lifted up in our lives, O oh God. We thank you in Jesus' name. And I want to speak the the blood confession over my husband. Bob, through the blood of Jesus, you have been redeemed out of the hands of the devil. All of your sins are forgiven. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses you continually from all sin. You've been justified, made holy, set apart to God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan has no place in you and no power over you. For God has given us power and authority over every vexing spirit, harassing spirit, tormenting spirit, occult spirit, every spirit that is not the spirit of god and we renounce those spirits that are not the spirit of god we live and walk by the spirit in the name of jesus and we thank you god for the faith you have given to us in the name of jesus amen amen, amen. thank you lord I touch amen. You. wow thank you <laughs> I want to challenge every person here today. God has demonstrated to you. You have a home. Your home is a sanctuary. You are a sanctuary. You get that chair out this week. Get your child in it, your husband in it, the landlord in it. <laughs> If you got a dog, get the dog in it. You'll probably appreciate it. 
But learn to pray one for another and to confess your faults one to another. Why? That you might be healed. If we don't use the Word of God, if we, it's all in the bank. It's all been done at the cross. But you've got to know how to draw the money out. Wouldn't it be awful to have a million dollars in the bank and didn't know how to draw it out? And you were in desperate need of some food? You've got to know how to take the Word of God and apply it in the situation when you're in the situation. But also when you're not in the situation, stay ahead of the game. Put that wall of prayer up. We got angels that are surrounding up. There's more with us than them. We are fighting the spiritual warfare. I said we're fighting. Are we fighting? I didn't mean fighting with one another. Forget about that junk. No more of that junk. No more. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Love one another as I have loved you. Pray for one another as I had prayed for thee. His head is so warm. I, you know, if your hands are cold, you ought to learn to lay hands on people. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just thought of that. Oh, that feels better, you know. Thank you, brother. Now, you know, I'm serious. I have a lot of humor and, and uh, just love me anyway. But I'm serious about this. Get your hot chair out. Husbands, pray for your wives. Wives, pray for your... Well, I've never done that before. It's time. Yeah, I said it's time. And you young people pray for dad and mom. I'm going to say this. I'm going to let you go. I, I got one second. We've got to talk fast. Man, I was fighting the devil one day. This was years ago. My, uh, one of my daughters, she's in her 50s now. She was about 14 years old. And I was in there struggling. She said, Daddy. I said, yeah, huh? Is that devil bothering you? <laughs> he sure is. He's, about, he's eating lunch with me. Get in the chair. Ooh. I got the chair out. She come in. And she's only 14 years old. She laid hands on me. I'm telling you, the devil went out the door. I could hear the door slam. These young kids, they got power. Power, power. But you need to teach them how to, to, to dispense that power, to let that power flow out of their vessel into the problem and situation. They got power. Has Dave got power? I tell you, there's one person in this church I want to pray for me. Be Dave right there. And I could name a few of you. Mrs. I started to say, call her Mrs. Keys. I know, I know she's not kidding. Mrs. James. <laughs> Where's, oh, there she is. <laughs> They're sisters, you know. I, I covered your prayers. You got power. You got power. Elizabeth, you got power, honey. Yeah, you is. It's inside of you. When's the last time you laid hands on anybody? Oh, you lay hands on them. You'll see that power demonstrate. They fall out of the chair. Let them fall. <laughs> let, me, let me share this. With, I got to let you go. <laughs> I got so much in me that it just takes time to get out. But uh, anyway, just be prepared for anything because I was to perform this marriage. We went to the um, officers club up here. They had a, this woman come down from New York. A New Yorker came down. And, it, and I was going to perform the marriage and everybody out there drinking their little whatever they were drinking. And, and, and the woman came up to me with Susan said, Oh, my sister's got a headache. Horrible headache. Would you pray for her? Well, yeah, have her come on up. So I'm out there standing. Everybody's all around drinking their tutors or whatever they're drinking. And, and she comes up, and I just reach over. I mean, her shoes come off of her feet. 
Her feet was like rubber. Anybody ever seen that? I mean, the power of God hit that woman, and boom, she's on the floor, and everybody like that. And I come over there, and I get my little tooth and I start drinking it. I mean, it was just grape juice, you know. I think. Anyway. Now, there... What will people think? Who cares? God is on the scene. You read your Bible. At least we don't have a whole lot of Pharisees around here going to throw us in jail, but we got a few. We won't go that way, Bob. Be brave. Be strong. Be courageous. I tell you, the Holy Ghost is in this place. Be strong. Be brave. I'm telling you, God's about to do something. He just needs somebody to lay hands on somebody and speak the articles of God under the power of the Holy Spirit and watch people come alive. Woo! Glory to hallelujah. Well, that woman came over and she said, Pastor Bob, I don't know what that was, but man, I feel great. My headache's gone. And then I said, well, let me share the gospel with you. Because you see, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And I shared the gospel with her. And she received Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. And she couldn't get enough of the Holy Ghost. Would you pray for me again? Well, when everybody's looking, I don't think I, I don't want nobody to see me pray. Man, be brave. Be strong. Be brave, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Be strong, be brave, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Hey, ha, 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 ha. Hey, brother, how you doing back there? Good to see y'all. All right, God loves you, God loves us. God has given us a little demonstration. So this week, ask the Holy Spirit. Get into the Word and see, brother, you bless me. See, that, that's how God works. You bless me. Oh, everybody bless me. So the next time, when the ball's passed around to you, be brave, be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Be strong. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Hey, be strong. <laughs> be brave. God bless you. I love you. If you've never received Christ as your personal Savior, I'm standing up here right now. Come up here. And we'll talk about the gospel and lead you to Christ. If you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, come on up with evidence of speaking in tongues. Come up and we'll pray for you. God bless you. Turn to somebody and say, wow, what a service. I've never been in one like that. Hallelujah.